Hello, everyone. This is Siddharth Thamber from Chicago Arthritis and Rujav Medicine. Welcome to today's webinar on Rujav Medicine treatments for arthritis, tendonitis, injuries, and back pain. So what you will get from this webinar is really the following. Number one, you'll learn about the best available treatments for arthritis and tendonitis that do not require surgery, includes orthobiologic or regenerative medicine treatments, what is legitimate and not legitimate in the field of regenerative medicine, and how to choose the best physicians and clinics for regenerative medicine as well. As I'm talking, please, by all means, go ahead and type in your questions. And most questions I'll probably get to just during the presentation but I will pause from time to time to catch up and answer questions as well. So the big question is, what would you do if your pain was controlled? How would your life improve? What exercises would you restart? What activities with family and friends would you participate in as well? Okay, so who am I? Again, my name is Siddharth Dambar, physician here at Chicago Arthritis and Regen Medicine, specialist in rheumatology, specialist in image-guided musculoskeletal injections in practice since 2008, as part of, and I'm also part of the, Regen the um, uh, Regenix Network since 2012, and uh, involved in Regen Medicine since 2008. The Regenix Network is the largest affiliated system of physicians that are involved in regenerative medicine, sharing ideas, protocols, best practices, and really trying to help our patients out to get them the best result possible. So my journey in regenerative medicine, essentially uh, when I was younger in high school, I played a lot of tennis as well as swimming, and I never really had shoulder issues. As I got older, I started to learn diagnostic musculoskeletal ultrasound and scanning my own shoulder, I came to realize that I had a small injury to the shoulder. As I got older and reincorporated some more physical activity and sports, I started to develop more pain. Um, just my experience kind of led me to have more of an interest in tendon and ligament injuries, which then got me more interested in musculoskeletal ultrasound, which then got me to realize that there's all sorts of treatments that we're not using or that would be good options for our patients who have musculoskeletal issues that we're not really getting better with just conservative or traditional management. So. When it comes to traditional care, there's a number of problems. So traditional care for whether it's tendon issues, joint issues, injuries, back pain, they're really not very good. They either mask the pain and you're really just waiting for eventual surgery, or the treatments that are available have all sorts of other side effects. For example, pain medications, they don't fix the problem and they have lots of side effects. Traditional injections like steroid injections and nerve blocks and radiofrequency ablation, they can help with pain, but they also have a lot of side effects from treatment as well. Surgery, there's always a role for surgery in more advanced and extreme conditions, but surgery a lot of times gets overused and sort of used very casually when it really doesn't need to be. And the problem with that is number one, surgery is much higher risk to you as a patient. Number two, if you cut out tissue, you can actually accelerate the arthritis process. It can lead to more instability. And many routine surgeries, including knee arthroscopy or shoulder arthroscopy, if you already have arthritis, is a problem and are not proven to be more effective than just conservative care. And for those of us involved in regenerative medicine, strong thought that eventually 80% of, of musculoskeletal conditions can avoid surgery, actually. So in searching for better options, we're looking for options that can uh, improve the cause of your problem that are low risk, low side effect potential, and can give you longer term improvement as well. So imagine reducing your pain and getting back to the activities you care about without surgery or pain medications. So regenerative medicine, it is the process where we use your own body cells to treat your musculoskeletal conditions. In the normal healing process, you can take something as small as a cut on your finger. What happens is you have platelets that enter that area. They release growth factors, which then leads to inflammation and then starts a normal cellular repair process. That works very well in tissue that has good blood flow, but in tissue with poor blood flow, that does not heal as well. That includes tendon, cartilage, ligaments, discs, labrum, meniscus. 
So regenerative medicine is a process where we take those same cells, your own blood platelets, your own bone marrow cells, and then inject that under ultrasound and x-ray guidance into the tissue that's damaged with the goal of restarting normal healing process that tissues normally undergo in order to recover from an injury. So why regenerative medicine? To begin with, it treats the source of your problem, meaning the source of your problem is a, um, a dysfunction in the normal cellular healing process. Number two, it's definitely safer than a big open surgery. Number three, these are effective for most musculoskeletal conditions. And again, I strongly believe that the, the majority of things that are currently going to orthopedic surgery can actually be handled by regenerative medicine in the same way that at one point, all cardiac issues were going to cardiac surgery, now 5% do. And the other 95% are treated either with needle-based procedures or medications only. So as we talked about, regenerative medicine works by optimizing your damaged cellular tissue. We can also improve the strength and stability of the supportive tissues, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We can reduce chronic inflammation as well as improve the overall neuromuscular health of the joint or tendon to make your overall unit, the, the joint, either the shoulder, um, elbow, shoulder, um, knee, lower back, the overall unit function much better. Okay, so what makes a regenerative medicine expert? And we'll be talking about this as we go along. These are things that you should be looking for when you are meeting your physician for your MSK, musculoskeletal issue. Number one, they should be a musculoskeletal expert. And what that means is that they should be properly trained in musculoskeletal issues, and they should be focused on that. So if your physician is treating you for your knee pain, but then jumping into another room and giving Botox to somebody's face, jumping into another room and treating their erectile dysfunction, jumping into another room, treating their blood pressure, treating another patient's low testosterone, that's not a, that's not a musculoskeletal expert. That's, that's someone who's kind of, they're, they're touching on too many things. And in medicine, the more of a specialist you are, generally the better you are at that treatment modality. Number two, they should be a non-surgical musculoskeletal expert. So surgeons are very good at surgery. However, they don't get the training for image guidance. When you do these kind of treatments, you need to use a very high level of ultrasound and x-ray guidance. And because they don't have that training, they're really not a regenerative medicine expert. Number three, they should be using image guidance for all procedures. I have a lot of colleagues who are a bit older who feel like just by palpating your skin, they can tell where to inject, um, they, they stick the needle to inject the tissue. The reality is when you're injecting your own cells, you can't just be around the joint or close to it. You have to be exactly precisely at a submillimeter level where the tissue needs to, where the tissue is injured. So you need to have image guidance. Number four, they need to understand how to use inflammation to heal, help you heal. A lot of physicians who treat you for pain issues, they will give you some temporary pain relief by putting in a lot of numbing medication, a steroid, which will give you pain relief for a few weeks. But regenerative medicine works because you have inflammation up front and you're getting better a few weeks down the line and then continuing to improve for months down the line. It's a very different modality. And if they don't understand how inflammation works like that, in a good way, they're not really going to be treating you properly. Number five, they understand the different types of biologic treatments that are used. I'll talk about that in a bit, but they need to understand how to use the right concentration of platelets, the right type of platelets when they use platelets versus bone marrow. They need to understand what treatments are actual living cells, which are not. A lot of my colleagues are really not on the level with that, unfortunately. Number six, they should be giving you a personalized treatment plan. They should not give you a generic one-size treatment fits all plan. If you go in there and all they have is treatment X and they don't know how to do everything else, um, you're getting a generic treatment plan. That's not the right way to do it. They should understand prolotherapy and how to treat instability, which I'll show in a little bit. They should be transparent regarding results and your candidacy for treatment, very important. I'll talk about more about that in a moment. And they should follow your results long-term and they should guide you through the process properly. This shouldn't be the process where you come in, get a quick injection, you're done, and you never see your doctor again. There needs to be a more um, 360 holistic overall process in terms of treating you. So some additional basics and, and frequently asked questions. Is this legal? Yes, absolutely. There are very strict guidelines from the FDA. As long as you're following those guidelines, and that includes, are you using 
your own cells, not somebody else's cells? Number two, are you treating musculoskeletal conditions? And number three, are you doing all these treatments in one day or are you storing cells for later use? If you're storing cells, that is not allowed. So if you follow the rules, these are appropriate and legal from an FDA and medical standpoint. Common question I get is, if I'm older, should I use someone else's cells? Simple answer, no. The data out there for most orthopedic conditions is that using your own living cells is the most effective way to do this in a safe manner as well. And that's where the evidence is. Using somebody else's cells, there's very little, if any, evidence in the, in the safety of that. Is there an age limit? Nope. Results for most areas are not impacted by age. The one exception are hips, which can be worse if your age is over 60 years old. So what sort of doctor should do these treatments? I touched on this already, but your physician should be focused on musculoskeletal conditions. They should be focused on non-surgical treatment for orthopedic conditions, and they should be a proper regenerative medicine expert. Can these treatments help if I've already had surgery? Depends, but yes, the exceptions being if the joint has already been replaced. My general rules, rules for orthopedic surgery for my patients are try to keep your anatomy if possible, avoid surgeries that cut out tissue, and always consider regenerative medicine treatment option before, if you've been recommended surgery, to see if maybe that's an alternative option for you. So we're going to talk a little bit more about some key concepts in regenerative medicine. Stability is very key. There's this concept in architect called tensegrity. Basically means if you take individual units that are weak on their own, if you put them in close approximation to one another and sort of tightly wrap them, you get a much stronger overall unit. So this concept in biology or in your body is called biotensegrity. Prolotherapy is the idea of using your own cells. You inject that into soft tissue, supportive structures around a joint that's been injured. What you do is you basically treat all the layers and depth that have been, that have been injured in, uh, uh, or chronically injured in what's causing your pain. That'll lead to progressive strengthening of that tissue over the time, which will then give you better, longer lasting results because you have better stability. Case study, this is a 71-year-old man, really chronic lower back pain. He's had prior lumbar surgery, still having pain. We treated multiple areas with his in his lower back with platelets, including his own ligaments, facet joints, muscles, and epidural space. With platelet-rich plasma, he had about 30% improvement. After several months, we end up escalating to bone marrow, uh, BMAC or bone marrow concentrate stem cell treatment, and injecting those same structures. And now he's had a much longer lasting result with 75% improvement for the last few years. Great example of where treating the entire unit, all the tissue that's involved, and using different types of modalities really gave him a very good result. Orthobiologics, these are the cells that we use to actually treat your condition. Again, this is part of the normal healing process using your own cells and definitely use your own cells. Do not use someone else's. There's risks to using somebody else's. Your body recognizes somebody else's cells as foreign and will attack it. So use your own cells. And again, that's where all the evidence is. So platelets, that's the most common type of orthobiologic that we use after an injury. Platelets are very important in the overall healing process. They use focus inflammation to help with repairing tissue damage. The growth factors from the platelets help us stimulate your local stem cells. The picture I have on the right is of two different types of platelet-rich plasma. The one with the red blood cells that's red tinged is more inflammatory, which you need to be careful with. It can help with muscle issues, but you want to avoid that in joints and tendons. The one on the left that's more amber or yellow color is more appropriate for your own joints and tendons. If your physician does not have the ability to adjust the type of platelets that you're getting, the concentration, or whether they're just using growth factors from the platelets or the actual cells, then you're getting a more you're not getting a really um, personalized treatment. You're getting a one-size-fits-all treatment. If they can make those adjustments, then you're getting a more personalized treatment. So this is a case study of a individual who came to me referred by a sports medicine doctor with patellar tendonitis. Um, we ended up treating him with platelet-rich plasma. Picture on the right is a picture of his procedure. The line over here on the far left side is his patella, his kneecap. Um, patellar tendon is right there. And his long um, needle shape is the needle. This is obviously zoomed in. And we end up injecting platelets into his patellar tendon. He had two treatments and he did really great. 
He came back in a few years later, at which time now he had his hamstring tendon was a problem on the other side of his leg. Again, platelet-rich plasma, and again, back to a great result as well. Something that we see very common, people with good long-term results after treatment. So the next type of orthobiologic to be aware of are using your own stem cells. So uh, your mesenchymal stem cells are the main cell that drives tissue repair and recovery after an injury. Again, use your own cells, not somebody else's. Bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells are legal in the US. It's called bone marrow concentrate. Fat stem cells, you can use adipose or fat for structural support, but if they're using your doctor, if they're using fat stem cells where they're breaking it down into a high concentration of your own stem cells, that's considered illegal in the US. The FDA has concerns about the enzyme that is utilized in that, that it may not be safe for humans. So that is unlikely to be used currently. That used to be used a lot more often in this country, but the FDA has really clamped down on that. You may hear of other types of stem cells, amniotic or umbilical cord cells. Uh, that used to be a huge rage in this country. It was very false marketing, unfortunately. And that was because there was no living cells in those products. Just the manner in which how they were processed, they were not, there were no living cells. There, were, there was not a proper stem cell treatment. The FDA and the FTC have really clamped down on that, and I, you just don't hear too much about that any longer, which is good. IV stem cells, you may hear about that in other countries. There's no proven benefit for orthopedic conditions. Again, I'd recommend sticking with what's proven out there. So what are outcomes you can expect with a stem cell treatment? Yes, we can improve your pain and function, even if you have advanced cases, even if you have advanced disease. So, but does that mean we can improve how your imaging looks? If you've had advanced arthritis, no. If you have a ligament or tendon tear that's still amenable to treatment, meaning it's not fully blown apart, then yes, those can still improve on imaging. If you have swelling in the joint or swelling in the bone, that can improve. If you have avascular necrosis, that can improve as well. So we can improve imaging and I'll show you some pictures of that, but more than anything else, it's about improving pain and function. Can we treat bone on bone arthritis? Common question I hear. Unfortunately, this term bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, it's not a medical term. It's not something that doctors should be using because it's not, it, it's not really a correct terminology. If you have, for example, I hear patients say all the time, they've been told that they have bone-on-bone -bone arthritis in their knee and you'll flex their knee, extend their knee, and their range of motion is essentially intact. You don't have bone-on-bone -bone if that's what's going on, right? You may have significant arthritis, but clearly the bones are not right on top of each other if you can, if you can flex and extend the knee. Keep in mind that arthritis is actually a biological condition. It's not just a picture on the wall. And because it's a biologic condition, orthobiologic treatments like using your own bone marrow, your own platelets can certainly help things out, in particular, if you still have good range of motion in the joint. Again, caveats for advanced arthritis would be for hip osteoarthritis. Also caveat, if you've got advanced arthritis in other joints, we can still treat those, but our main expectation is improving pain and function in that case, not necessarily improving imaging. So can we treat tendon and ligament here? So the kind of good cases to show this, this is a knee ACL per, um, individual. This was a, um, if you have a partial thickness tear, we can definitely treat that. If you have a full thickness tear, if the tissues are still closely approximated, yes, if they're fully apart, then you should consider surgery. So this is a case of a 28-year-old man. He's a, he's a butcher. This is not a professional athlete. This is a butcher. And he had an ACL tear playing recreational volleyball. So he came to see me a few months after his injury. We ended up treating him with his own bone marrow concentrate stem cell treatment. And by the time, three months later, he had no pain and we started dynamic exercise. I'll show you his imaging in a moment. The picture on the right, this is his knee cap. That's the thigh bone. That's the shin bone. This is the needle going into the knee. This is again, an overall x-ray imaging of this process. And what's lighting up here is his ACL. And you can really only do this kind of procedure under image guidance or x-ray guidance specifically. So here's the kind of result that he had. He had not only a great clinical result, meaning pain and function, he also had a great imaging result. The image on the left is his pre-treatment, meaning after his injury, but before his treatment MRI. So this is, this is where his ACL is supposed to be, the bottom of it. You can see fibers of the ACL here. When you go up to the top, you can 
it's not very well visualized. And when you go into the middle, it's really not visual, very well visualized. The radiologist has called this a full thickness tear. And, um, uh, you know, was concerned that this was not something that could properly heal. His image on the right is his post-treatment MRI using his own cells. That's the bottom of the ACL. That's the top of the ACL. And that's the middle of the ACL. Now here you can see a structure that is much well, much better visualized. That's very linear and straight and essentially looks normal now. And actually his radiology report is that his ACL is normal now. And that is comparing his pre-treatment MRI where his ACL is pretty badly torn to his MRI where it's post-treatment where he's had not only good, great clinical result, but a good, a great imaging result as well. This is a case of an individual, 57-year-old man. He's a contractor. Does a lot of work with his arms above his head. He had chronic shoulder pain. These are ultrasound images um, describing what he has. This is his ultrasound on the left side. Um, this is his rotator cuff tendon. That's the bone that it's attaching to. And this black hole right here, that's his tear. This image on the left is also pretreatment. That's the hole, that's the tear. So he had a the, um, uh, he had bone um, uh, bone marrow concentrate stem cell as well as platelets injected into that shoulder rotator cuff. Three months ago or three months later, he's doing fantastic. This again on the right side now is his post treatment uh, ultrasound. Here's his rotator cuff, and what you have here now is tissue that's filled in where he previously had that black hole. And again, you see that same thing. You have tissue repair that's occurring here, and that's again a great result where he's had not only pain relief, he's also had a really great imaging result as well. Interventional orthopedics, that is a process where we use image guidance, x-rays and ultrasound to treat orthopedic ish, uh, injuries. Picture on the left is of a rotator cuff treatment. So this is the supraspinatus tendon uh, that I've uh, just imaged right there. That's a very small tear in the tendon, and this is a needle injecting it. This is a very zoomed up picture, meaning that that tear is about, it's less than one millimeter by one millimeter. To hit that, you have to be very precise. You cannot do that blindly. Again, I tell my colleagues that if you're not using image guidance, that doesn't make any sense, at least from what I'm doing here. I cannot hit something that is less than one millimeter by one millimeter just blindly injecting a needle into the into the um, into the tissue. So as I tell my page, uh, my patients and my colleagues that until I have X-ray vision, I'm using the ultrasound and X-ray in the office for sure to help guide me with treatment. Picture on the right, this is injecting into the shoulder joint. So here's the needle. You see a little bit of contrast in the joint. That straightforward. We're injecting into the joint. This little triangular structure here that's contrast into the labrum. That's injecting into the labrum as well. So in this case, this is a patient that had those, both of those structures treated. The labrum in particular is something you cannot inject blindly, something that really does take that high level image guidance. So again, some more knee pictures. The one on the left was a patellar tendon treatment. I showed that before. The one on the right is that ACL treatment. So this is a case study of a ankle pain issue, avascular necrosis. This is a 41-year-old man. He is a chef and he's standing on his feet for 10, 12 hours per day. And so he's developed some early arthritis, but more importantly, avascular necrosis. So the picture on the left, this is an ankle joint MRI. What's lighting up here that I flagged, that is avascular necrosis, which means that the bone is starting to die. So if you don't do anything about that, that will certainly destroy the bone and eventually start damaging the joint and lead to progressive bad arthritis, pain, dysfunction. So we did the Regenix three-step bone marrow stem cell protocol. Three months post-treatment, he was 90% improved and his MRI images look amazing. So you can see now that prior swelling in the bone, lighting up of the bone is totally resolved. And even the fluid in the joint has resolved. So he's three plus years out and he's still doing really great and able to continue to work, stand on his feet for hours on end, and is doing wonderful. Regenerative medicine treatments, 
offer safe and effective solutions for your pain. Okay, I'll just quickly answer this question. Someone had asked, how do we determine what type of arthritis somebody has? You know, it's really a few different things. It's what are your symptoms? What, how does your exam look? How does your imaging look? Sometimes labs as well. You combine all that, you can help to determine if somebody has inflammation in the joints versus if somebody has instability in the joint or if they have a nerve-related pain that, that's, causing, that's causing their issues. So it's really just using, you know, your, using our appropriately trained um, clinical sense and, and expertise to help figure that out. So other frequently asked questions that, I, that I'm asked, is this too good to be true? So there's evidence, there's a lot of evidence for the effectiveness of regenerative medicine. Philip Hernigue is a um, orthopedic surgeon in France who's been doing, who's been using bone marrow concentrate um, stem cell treatments for shoulders and knees since the mid 1990s. And he's got data that is very long-term. He even has data that compares one of his, uh, his same patient one knee got treated with surgery, one knee got treated with bone marrow. And so he's got comparative studies like that showing the effectiveness of using your own bone marrow stem cells. The Regenix Network, of which I'm a member, has data since 2005. I have a lot of colleagues that, that um, you know, it's interesting. 10 years ago, I had colleagues that would say they, didn't, they, they knew nothing about these treatments and they didn't think these treatments worked. They, they thought it was pseudoscience. And in the last 10 years, there's been a lot more evidence, a lot more data. And those same colleagues now will tell their patients, they're still not sure if these treatments work, but they think it's worthwhile trying. And it's interesting because this is a rapidly developing field, but it's definitely not new. I've had personal experience since 2008. And while I have colleagues who are slowly starting to get up to speed with some of these kind of treatments, the reality is that the data and effectiveness for a lot of these treatments is such that for the right indication, the evidence is very good. In the world of musculoskeletal medicine, pain, orthopedic surgery, the evidence is frequently not great. It's very much based on what is the evidence, what is the, um, what is the clinical sense of the, of the physician. In regenerative medicine, we've had a higher threshold to pass because of a lot of the doubters. And because of that, the evidence is actually pretty good and actually getting better. There's certainly right and wrong ways to do this. And if you're not experienced, if you're doing it the wrong ways, you're not going to get the right outcome. And the expectations have to be grounded in reality and evidence-based medicine. You have to give patients the right kind of evidence um, about um, what to expect. How long do results last? Regenix is data that goes out to now 10, 15 years. Philip Hernigue from France is data that goes up over 20 years. What I tell people is if you have a chronic condition, always think a little bit conservatively. You've had something that's been developing for years or decades. And because of that, expect that a repeat treatment or a booster treatment at some point, a few years down the line would likely be helpful. As an example, if you've got knee arthritis, if you've had a bone marrow treatment, you're doing well for a few years, you may benefit at the three-year, four-year, five-year point of getting a um, booster PRP treatment just to kind of keep the initial treatment going. The best way to maintain results after treatment are improve your biomechanics, maintain your ideal body weight, exercise regularly, take the appropriate supplements, take the right nutrition to reduce inflammation, repeat treatment as needed is additive, meaning it's, you know, if you see how a steroid injection works, you get an initial benefit and then it comes right back down to baseline. Well, these kind of treatments, there's a slow progressive improvement over several months, and then you're generally hanging out that higher level. If you slip a little bit, or if you're not quite at your goal, repeating treatment, you're now starting at a higher base. You're not starting back down at zero. You're not starting at a higher base and you're building to a higher level after that. Cost. So a few things about cost. Number one, these are not routinely covered by insurance. There's some exceptions. There's over 500 self-insured companies. That's, that's essentially all large companies are self-insured uh, that have added the Regenix procedures to their benefits plan. To learn more about that, go to regenixcorporate.com. Cost estimates in the U.S. that you can expect for PRP is $2,500 for treatment. For your own bone marrow stem cell treatments, it's about $8,500 for treatment. The key is to determine value. 
are number one, is your physician and clinic, because that's important as well, are they regenerative medicine experts? Are you receiving a real stem cell treatment or something that's been mislabeled? And these are in-office procedures, meaning you can avoid hospitals and surgery center facility fees because these don't need to be done in that kind of setting. So again, to emphasize some things, what makes a regenerative medicine expert? Number one, they need to be someone that um, is a musculoskeletal expert. That's really all that they're seeing and we're focused on. They shouldn't be dabbling. Number two, they should be a non-surgical musculoskeletal expert. If it's a surgeon and they're just, just dabbling a little bit just because they've got some patients with this, they're probably not focused enough. They should be using image guidance for all procedures. You have to be exactly on the right tissue, not just around it. They need to understand inflammation. They need to understand that this is a long game. It takes some time to get you back, back to your highest level. They should understand the different types of treatments and give you a bespoke or personalized treatment option, not one that they just give to every single person that walks through. They should understand instability and how to use prolotherapy. Keyword there, if your physician does not know prolotherapy, they're not a region med expert. They should be transparent about results and your candidacy for treatment. They should be able to tell you, are you a good, fair, or poor candidate? They sh should follow your results long-term. They shouldn't just treat you and then they just disappear. And they should guide you through the process. What that means is, in, in our case, um, you're going to get a very thorough evaluation and report of what treatment we're recommending, as well as your candidacy for treatment and what to expect with treatment. You'll also end up speaking with a patient liaison who will help explain that to you in, in, in their own words as well. So not just medical speak, but they'll help explain it to you then there as well. Before you proceed with treatment, you should really have all your questions answered. These treatments are relatively new, and I think you deserve to have a better sense of what you're getting yourself into. It shouldn't be just a high volume shop where they're just running through patients as fast as possible. Let me just answer a couple other questions here. So somebody asked about hip osteoarthritis. Will the procedure eliminate surgery or prolong time until surgery is necessary? Depends on what stage you're where getting your hip osteoarthritis. Hips are very, very unique compared to other things. As an example, hips and lower back, I'm sorry, knees and lower back. If you see a patient who's had knee arthritis or lower back arthritis and pain for three decades, they still respond great to treatment. Hips are such that they can go fast. If your hip osteoarthritis is at a early or moderate stage, you can still improve from treatment. If you're at an advanced stage, you should consider hip replacement surgery. So for catching you at an early stage, we can prevent you from going to surgery. You have to do all the right exercise thereafter, but there is a good chance that we can prevent you from going to surgery. Next question, I'm be asking about pseudogout. I think it's a great example of where your physician needs to be able to tell what can respond properly to these kinds of treatments and what, what things are not as well, uh, what, what things are less likely to respond. For pseudogout, I would recommend treating the inflammation first and foremost. Pseudogout is a condition where you have crystals that are causing inflammation and damage in the joint. You need to control that inflammation first, whether that's with supplements, diet, maybe medication. Control that first. If you have some chronic wear and tear that's developed because of that chronic pseudogout, then you can use these kind of cell-based treatments to, to treat that. Keep in mind that if you're prone to inflammation, that includes pseudogout, you may have more inflammation upfront from treatment for the first few days than compared to the general population. Somebody else asking about three previous knee meniscus surgeries, any hope? Absolutely. Very common issue that we see, someone who's had multiple surgeries for the knee, multiple arthroscopies. The issue with knee arthroscopy is that every time they chip away at your meniscus, they're taking away more and more supportive structure that's meant to help support your knee. We can still treat that, improve the strength of the knee. Um, it'd be better if you didn't have the three meniscus surgeries, but commonly we do see people that have had multiple surgeries and they still do well with treatment focusing on not only treating the inflammation, but the stability and where the damage is. I'll let a couple more questions come in. So just a little bit more about how we work here at Chicago Arthritis and Regenerative Medicine. Focus on non-surgical treatment for your arthritis, tendonitis, injuries, and back pain. In your evaluation, always first starting off with, do you have issues with inflammation, instability, asymmetry, neuromuscular issues? 
Correct these with low-risk interventions, if possible, exercise and supplements. If not working, then regenerative medicine treatments. We start talking and considering that. Realistically, most of my patients, when they come to me, they've already failed a few other things to begin with. When it comes to using regenerative medicine, we're using the highest quality products from your own body, giving you a plan that is specifically tailored for your condition and needs, not a one-size-fits-all kind of plan that we give to everyone, and using delivering cells using the highest level of image guides possible to give you the best possible chance of a great result. How to get evaluated. Simplest ways, you go to chicagoarthritis.com. You can find the different ways to do that. Um, keep in mind also in the chat section, you should see listed our phone number, our email, and even a link if you want to schedule directly via our telemedicine or, or in-office, actually, appointment scheduling process. Lastly, just some really key points, I think, when it comes to patient care, just about what, what we're about here. First and foremost, when it comes to treating patients, integrity is everything. Respect and collaborative care is everything. When we treat patients, we're going to treat you the same way that we treat our family. Uh, the treatments that we give to patients are the same treatments I've given to both my parents, both my in-laws, my other family members, friends. And that means if you have something that we can treat and help with, we'll be honest about what our expectations. You need to understand what you're getting yourself into. We expect questions and answer those questions. Transparent about what kind of candidate you are for treatment. Transparent regarding the cost of treatment. Giving you the best possible options that are available. And again, doing what's right for patients in the same way that we would for our own family members as well as friends. Great question. Somebody asking, will this work for the hand or thumb joint? Absolutely. Common thing that we see, um, CMC joint arthritis or arthritis in, in the MCP joint of the thumb, very common, especially the way that we all live nowadays, constantly texting, using the computer all the time. You see so many patients that have thumb issues. In the past, really not much was done for those kind of patients, but Platelets or bone marrow, I find platelets as first line is a very good option, but even bone marrow if needed can be very helpful, but yeah, absolutely still very amenable to treatment, absolutely. Well, as we're coming to a close here, I'll kind of leave the floor open for any other remaining questions. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, I will start to wrap up here. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. If you have any other questions, please feel free to call or email us. If you'd like to be evaluated, you can call, email, or schedule with us directly. And if you just have questions, no problem. We're here to answer and help. OK, somebody else asking about watching this after the fact. Absolutely, we'll give you a link for this. You can actually check our YouTube channel. Um, we'll, you'll see the link for the YouTube link and you'll be able to watch everything on that. Afterwards, you'll be able to share that link as well if you want to give that to a friend or family member or colleague as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for your time. And if we can help out, look forward to connecting in the future. And I hope everyone has a good day. Live well and be safe. Have a good day. Bye-bye.